return to the river. But how does a city collect all the water people use and the rain or snow that falls on the streets? Well, sewage and stormwater travel through about 3,000 miles of sewers, mostly by gravity, into the city's three water pollution control plants. Preliminary treatment of wastewater takes place in two steps. The first step in getting wastewater clean enough to return to the river is to take the trash out of it. Doing screenings, bar screens like these capture the trash as wastewater enters the plant. A mechanical rake removes the trash that gets caught on the screens. As you can see, cans, leaves, trash, soda bottles, and other plastic tree limbs and sometimes even paper money are included in the debris. The second step is the removal of grit, which is composed of the heaviest material in wastewater, including bottle caps, undigested food, sand, and gravel. The wastewater is slowed to a velocity of one foot per second, allowing grit to settle to the bottom of the tank or channel. Other pollutants, too light to settle at this velocity, remain suspended for treatment downstream. There are more pollutants in wastewater than trash and grit. Decomposable organic materials, such as the oil we wash from our skin and what goes through the garbage disposal and down the toilet, also need to be removed. The wastewater, slowed to about a half a foot per second, is flowing in the primary tanks behind me. The oils in the grease, called scum, flow to the top, whereas the heavier stuff, sludge, sinks to the bottom. Forge made of redwood or else fiberglass move the scum and the sludge to their final destination or takeoff point. The scum is scraped off the top and sent to a landfill. The primary sludge is pumped from the bottom of the tank to the digest for additional treatment. After primary treatment, the wastewater flows into the aeration tanks. Here, treatment of the wastewater takes place on a microscopic level. Microscopic organisms, which we call bugs for short, eat the pollutants still in the wastewater after primary treatment. These pollutants are food for the bugs, which get fatter and reproduce. Like people, the bugs need air to survive, so air or pure oxygen is added to the tanks to help them thrive. Workers at the plant monitor the amounts of air, food, and organisms present to keep the process of treating the wastewater at peak efficiency. At the Southwest Water Pollution Control Plant, the bugs get almost pure oxygen which has been separated from the air on site. The bugs at the Northeast and Southeast water pollution control plants have to work just a little bit harder to get their oxygen. They are fed air, which is only 21% oxygen. So what happened to all of those pollutants that settled to the bottom of the tanks during the primary and final sedimentation processes? Well, those pollutants are removed from the water and digested to reduce their mass and then further processed so the sludge can return to the land as biosolids. Some of the sludge needs to be made thicker. This excess activated sludge from the final sedimentation tanks is pumped into a tank supersaturated with air. The solids in the water attach to the air bubbles and flow to the top. There the sludge is skimmed off, mixed with primary sludge and pumped to the digesters. Digesters are large enclosed tanks where the sludge can be digested. Anaerobic organisms that live without hair act like the bacteria in human stomachs. At temperatures of 95 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit, the anaerobic organisms stabilize the sludge and reduce the number of disease-causing organisms. A particle that is fed into a digester takes 18 to 21 days to get out. After digestion, the sludge is either pumped or travels by barge to the biosolids recycling center for stabilization by composting. The tanks all around me are similar to the primary sedimentation tanks, but there are many more of these. The flow out of the aeration tanks, composed of a mixture of microscopic organisms and waste, flows into the final sedimentation tanks. The organisms, which we call bugs for short, stuffed from their feeding frenzy in the aeration tanks, sink to the bottom of the final sedimentation tanks with all the pollutants they have just eaten. This bug mixture, now settled to the bottom, is called activated sludge. Most of this activated sludge is pumped back to the aeration tanks. 
to keep the bug population high enough to eat new pollutants coming in. What doesn't get pumped back to the aeration tanks is removed from the system by pumping to the sludge thickening tanks. Even though the water in this beaker looks clean enough to return to the river, it still has one last step in its treatment. Some microscopic disease-causing organisms remain in the water. To kill them, chlorine in the form of sodium hypochlorite, a strong bleach, is added. Adding too much or too little chlorine to the clean water returning to the river can upset the health of the river environment. The water discharged to the Delaware River from the three water pollution control plants is cleaner than the river itself. Thanks to the efficiency of our plants and others in the Delaware River watershed, our streams are cleaner today than they have been in many years. Clean streams mean cleaner source water for drinking, returning wildlife, and enhanced recreational opportunities for all.